In Poland, we were wandering around the country, camera crew, producer, researcher, sound man, all the rest, sort of getting a look at the face of Poland, uh, did schools, things like that. And finally, as it happened, one day we came on our traveling through the eastern part of Poland, not far from the Soviet frontier, we saw a strange sight. Uh, a bunch of horse-drawn carts, people with what seemed to be all their possessions piled up in those carts. And I stopped and began talking to them, didn't speak Polish, but I did speak some Yiddish, and they spoke Yiddish. And they told me in Yiddish, with our camera running, that they were on their way to, to the train station to go to Vienna, to go to Israel. Now at that time, 1959, the idea of East European Jews going to Israel seemed hard to comprehend because the Soviets had put a big ban on Jewish emigration in order not to arouse their Arab friends. So I couldn't understand it. I went back to Warsaw and went to see the Israeli minister Warsaw and told him what I'd seen. And he said, where was this that this happened? He said, well, a town called Zhezhov, right near the Soviet border there. And you talked to them? Yes. And you filmed them? And they told you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how is it, how is it possible? How can they be going to Israel? Mr. Shore, um, I will tell you the rest of that story, and then you will decide what you will do. There is a piece of Poland that was occupied by the Soviet Union at the end of the war. There was some 80, 90,000 Jews living there, desperately unhappy at suddenly becoming Soviet residents instead of Polish residents, which was bad enough. Soviets were not particularly anxious to have them. Polish government didn't really want them. And so we, the Israeli government, made an agreement with the Soviet and Polish government that they would be, quote, repatriated, unquote, from the Soviet Union to Poland, but would not stay in Poland. They would continue on to Israel, except that the Soviets said they are willing to do that as long as it is not known. If it becomes public what's happening, the arrangement stops immediately. And so my friend the minister says, you have your story. If you do this on television, it's the end for 50, 60,000 Jews. And uh, I, I uh, gulp. Uh, what do I do? Now, every day we would be shipping back uh, reels of film to New York, we'd be processed. In the end, we, we'd do a script for it, and I'd do my stand, but stand up parts and so on and so forth. But this big can of film, I kept on my desk in the hotel room, and I said, uh, Ship the rest. Well, let me think about this a minute. And next day, I said, What about that? Well, let, leave it there for another little while. And to make the story, well, the very long story short, I never shipped it at all. I just never shipped it at all. We got our show on the air, I was back in New York, went and see Ed Morrow with his can of film. I said, Ed, let me tell you the story of this film. I'm not particularly proud, I'm so on, I'm, but here it is. And I told him, and all he said was, I understand. Um, I'm, not, I'm not proud of it, it's against my ethic that any information that you come by legitimately, you have to pass on to the public. You're not the one to... But I did it. I did it. And it was a u almost unique thing in my life to, to have voluntarily killed a story or a good part of a story.